Good day class. Welcome to the Felix Chan YouTube channel. And this is your science teacher, Mrs. Mary Ann and Fernandez. We all know that our country is in its initial phase of the COVID vaccine rollout. And people have different reactions to this COVID vaccine. Side effects differ from one person to another. And do you know also that the older you get, the less likely for you to have side effects of the vaccine because pe younger people's immune system are more likely to react strongly and quickly to the vaccine. In chemistry, the word reaction is a common thing. And this reaction is our topic for today. We are going to discuss the types of chemical reactions. Now we have the following objectives. Differentiate the types of chemical reactions and classify reactions according to their types. And at the end of our video lesson, we will try to apply our knowledge to several chemical reactions for you to identify the type. Now let's get started. I have here pictures of changes in our everyday lives. And can you identify whether it's a physical or a chemical change? Okay, let's start with the first picture. In the first picture, you can see that a person is cooking food. Okay, what type of change is happening there? Is it physical or chemical? Okay, you are correct. It's a chemical change because once the food is already cooked, undergoes change and produces new substance. Okay, let's continue with the next picture. The next picture shows that the ice is melting. What type of change is that? Is it physical or chemical? Okay, you are correct. It's a physical change. Why? Because the ice just melts and the ice turns into water. No new substance is formed and it is reversible. Okay, let's proceed with the third picture. The third picture shows that there is boiling of water. What type of change happens in boiling of water? Okay, you are correct again. It's a physical change. No new substance is formed and you can reverse it. It's reversible. Now analyze the next picture. The picture shows that iron is rusting. Okay, what do you think is the, the, the change happening there? Okay, yes, you are right. It's a chemical change, why? Right? Because there is a new substance form. Iron turns into rust. What about in the next picture, the ripening of fruits? What change happens there? Okay, correct. It's a chemical change because you cannot bring back the original form of the fruit and there is a new substance form. Now look at the last picture. This is a very interesting case. Melting of wax. What do you think is the kind of change occurs in this picture? Okay, you are correct. It's, a, it's both a physical and a chemical change. The melting of the wax shows a physical change well, the burning of the lid is a chemical change because burning will form carbon dioxide and water vapor. Now, we will focus our attention to the chemical change. In a chemical change, a chemical reaction takes place. A chemical reaction is a process in which a new substance with new properties are formed. And to be able to write a chemical a reaction, a chemical equation is used by chemists. It's a shorthand for writing chemical reactions. Now, th the important thing here is that in a chemical reaction, there is a need to form new products or new substances. So let us have example. Here you have hydrogen plus oxygen, the combination will result to water. Here you, 
We all know that hydrogen and oxygen are gases. And by nature, water is liquid. The combination of the two produces a substance that is different from them. So similarly, when you combine sodium and chlorine, they produce sodium chloride. Sodium is a metal and chlorine is a poisonous gas. And how come a metal, the combination of a metal and a poisonous gas will result to a substance that we can eat every day? And that is salt. Sodium chloride is salt. And that is the magic of chemistry, that in a chemical reaction, new substances are formed or substances are formed with new properties. Now let's talk about the substances involved in the reaction. You have hydrogen plus oxygen resulting to water. What do you call the substances at the left side of the reaction? And what do you call the substance at the right side of the reaction? Okay, you are right. The, the substances at the left side are what you call reactants and the substances at the right side is the product. For the case of the sodium and chlorine, sodium and chlorine are the reactants and sodium chloride is the product. So substances that are written at the left side of the reaction are what you call reactants. And the substances written at the right side of the reaction, separated by arrows, are what you call product. Let's go back to our reaction with hydrogen and oxygen producing water. This reaction is what you call a word equation. Now, if you would like to convert that into a chemical equation, we use symbols for this equation. But there is a rule in converting word equation into a chemical equation. For the case of hydrogen, we do not just use the, word, the letter H for hydrogen and also for oxygen. Instead, we will represent hydrogen by its molecular structure, meaning the molecular structure of hydrogen that the, in a molecule of hydrogen, there are two atoms, as well as in oxygen. So we will write hydrogen as H2 and oxygen as O2. Now the product is H2O, which is the com a compound, the combination of hydrogen and oxygen. This compound actually is written based on its valency, meaning you get the valence of hydrogen and oxygen and you, and you use the crisscross to be able to write the chemical formula. In the case of the sodium and chlorine resulting to sodium chloride, we write the symbols for sodium and chlorine. Again, for the chlorine, you use the molecular uh, structure of chlorine, that's Cl2, which is one molecule, it has two atoms, and then you have sodium as Na resulting to NaCl. Now, you know, we have a very fast review of our knowledge about chemical reactions. Now, this time, we will deal with the different types of chemical reactions. We will try to analyze the reactions, and then we will classify them to what type of reaction is that. So, here are the types of chemical reactions. The first reaction that we are going to talk about is the synthesis or combination reaction. It's a reaction when a compound is made from simple or simpler materials. You know, the word synthesis is just a fancy word for to make it up or to combine. So whenever there is a combination of two or more simple or simpler materials, you call that a synthesis or combination reaction. Here is an example of a synthesis and combination reaction. Here you have carbon combining with oxygen gas, O2, to produce CO2, that's carbon dioxide. 
In this reaction, you have two simple materials combining to form a more complex one. So it's a very simple combination of two simple materials. So here's another example. You have sodium and chlorine forming sodium chloride. So again, you have two simple materials and elements forming sodium chloride, which is complex. Now, a quick look on the equations that we will be using today or in this session. Some of the equations may be unbalanced or not balanced, or they might not have the same or exact number of atoms at both sides of the equations. Uh, normally, it's very important to balance equations. But in this case, in our sessions, since we are dealing with the different types of chemical reactions, the numbers on both sides of the reactions might be too distracting to you. And so that to reduce that distraction, we, we will disregard unbalanced equations. But instead, we will just look at how the elements are rearranging and how the products are produced by the, the rearrangement of these elements. Now, class, in a synthesis or combination reaction, we start with simple materials and put them together to make something more complex. If we want to represent a synthesis reaction, generally or generically, we could say that it looks like this. A, we had A and B combining to make AB. A and B are different elements or different compounds come together to make something more complex. And that is what you call synthesis reaction. Now let's move on to the next type of chemical reaction, which is the decomposition reaction. You know, the decomposition reaction is a kind of opposite of the synthesis reaction. Because in the synthesis, you put things together. But in a decomposition reaction, this is a reaction where a compound is broken down into simpler compounds or all the way to the elements that they make it up. Okay, in our example here, we have water breaking down to hydrogen and oxygen gas. These are the elements that they make it up. In a decomposition reaction, you do not have to break things down all the way to the basic elements. You can also break them down into simpler elements or compounds. For example, you have calcium carbonate breaking down to CaO plus CO2. Okay, it's not like we're taking this all the way, breaking this down all the way to just simple carbon, simple calcium, or simple oxygen. But still, these are simpler compounds. Although they are simpler compounds, this is also a, a decomposition reaction. So if we want to come up with a certain generalized way of writing the decomposition reaction, we can write it like this. A and B, or AB, breaking apart into A plus B, where, where AB is some kind of a compound, and A and B are simple compounds or simpler compounds or elements. And class, this is what you call the composition reaction. Now let's talk about combustion. Combustion basically is a fancy word for burning. And when something burns, what happens? Combustion is a reaction that happens when a compound of carbon and hydrogen and sometimes oxygen combines with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. And let's have the examples of this. CH4, which is a chemical formula for methane, that is a type of a natural gas, combines with oxygen gas and forms carbon dioxide and water. Now we can start with different things 
in a combustion reaction. And it says that compounds usually have carbons and hydrogens. So there, here is another example of a combustion reaction. So this one starts with C3H8, and that's propane, the chemical formula for propane, which is another type of natural gas. And just like with the other reaction, we, we combine C3H8 with oxygen gas, producing carbon dioxide and water. So these are essentially identical, almost identical reactions. They only differ in the number of carbons and hydrogens in their reactants. But still, both of them react with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. You know, class, in combustion reactions, reactants only differ in the number of carbons and hydrogens and hydrogens, and these are called hydrocarbons. It turns out that a lot of things that we burn, like natural gas, diesel, gasoline, are really, really similar, and they only differ in the number of carbons and hydrogens. But all of them react with oxygen gas that produce carbon dioxide and water. So combustion reactions for a wide variety of compounds look pretty similar with each other. Sometimes there are combustion reactions that contains oxygen. Here is an example of a combustion reaction that has oxygen. This is the chemical formula for ethanol or ethyl alcohol. You have C2H5OH. As you can see, it has lots of carbons, lots of hydrogens, and look, as well as, you, as well as oxygen, it has oxygen. And this compound reacts with the oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Just like the other two examples that we had, both, all of them have oxygen gas in the reactants as one of the reactants and end up producing carbon dioxide and water. Now, if you want to come up with a generalized way or generic way of writing a formula for the combustion reaction, it might look like this. We start out with something that has carbon and hydrogen and we can have different numbers of carbon and hydrogen. That is why we put X and Y here, as well as oxygen. The number of oxygen also varies here. And this compound reacts with oxygen gas and will always produce carbon dioxide and water. So this is the general equation in writing a combustion reaction. So let's move on to the next type of chemical reaction, and that is the single replacement reaction. In a single replacement reaction, one element that starts out by itself, replacing another element in a compound, kicking it out. So how does this happen? Let's have an example of this. Okay, we start out with iron, which is the element by itself. And iron combines with copper chloride, that's CuCl2, and copper chloride initially are paired. And then what happens? Iron kicks copper out, so the copper ends by itself, and iron takes the place of copper, and so iron and chlorine are now paired up. So I would like to use a dance analogy for this, and this happens to everybody in high school. Okay, here's what's going on. A dancing couple, purple and green, they are so happy dancing with each other. And then red comes along and then says, Hey purple, I want to dance with green. So poor purple gets booted out and red ends up with green. Purple ends all by himself. So this is exactly what happens in a single replacement 
reaction. Iron here is like red coming up to a dancing couple and then booted out copper and then copper ends by itself and red the iron the red one is now with Cl which is the green one. I'd like to give you another example of a single replacement reaction. You have Cu, which is all by itself, and then goes to a couple of Ag and O3, that is silver nitrate. And then what happens? Cu boots out Ag, and Ag ends by itself, and Cu takes the place of the Ag, and then ends up pairing with NO3. So that's a single replacement reaction. So how do we write a generalized way the single replacement reaction? We start out with A, that's the element initially by itself, plus B, C, this is the paired elements, and then resulting to B, which is the element that is booted out, N plus AC, the elements that end up that end up being paired together. So again, class, this is the single replacement reaction. Now let's move on to the double replacement reaction. You know, class, in a single replacement or double replacement reactions, they may be sometimes called single displacement or double displacement. Just in case your teacher or the textbook uses different terms, okay? So, double replacement reaction. It is not as heartbreaking or nearly as heartbreaking as the single replacement reaction because the positive and the negative ions in two compounds switch together. Nobody is being kicked out here. So, we have two compounds switching partners together. Here is a dance analogy for the double replacement reaction. So in a double replacement, it's just that you have two different couples, dancing couples. The red and the gray, the red used to be with the gray, and the purple used to be with the green. And then ends up, the red ends up with the green, and the purple ends up with the gray. Nobody gets kicked out here. They were just switching partners. Okay, in our example, we start out with Ba pairing up with chlorine plus Na pairing up with sulfate or SO4 and then ends up Ba is now paired up with SO4 and Na is paired with the Cl. So, in this case, the compounds just switch places. So, if you will notice, these compounds, the four compounds, are what you call ionic compounds because they are composed of positive and negative ions because you can separate them and break them into their positive and negative ions. And I would like to show this. So, Ba2 plus was initially paired with Cl1 minus. And then Na1 plus initially paired with two SO4 2 minus. And then Ba looks for another negative ion and it finds SO4. And then it finally it was paired with SO4 and it becomes BaSO4. And then Na being left alone looks for another negative ion and it finds Cl negative minus 1 or negative 1 and finally Na is now paired with Cl1 minus. So this is how the double replacement happens for the, the ions. Here's another example of a double replacement reaction and I'll break this down into its ions right away. Now look here. You have you start with K plus paired with B Br minus, and then we have Ag plus paired with NO3 minus, and then they get switched. 
Okay. So, K goes and finds another negative ion, and which is NO3. So, K ends up with NO3. And then, AG, that's silver again, AG plus, finds for another negative ion, and then ends up pairing with Br. So, AG is now with Br, and K ends up with NO3. So, that's a double replacement reaction. Now, class, if you want to explain and to write a generic or general way the double replacement reaction, we can use this reaction. Okay, A, B, where A and B are paired up, plus C, D, and C, D are paired up, switch partners. Okay, switch partners to give us A, D, and B, C. And this is your general way of writing the double replacement reaction. Now, for the last type of chemical reaction, we have the acid base neutralization. So, it's a special kind of double replacement reaction and takes place when an acid and base react with each other, producing salt. Okay, this reaction will start with either an acid or a base. And how do we know that we have an acid? And how do you know that you have a base? You have an acid if the compound starts with an H. And if the compound has an OH, it's a base. For example, we have here a reaction where, wherein you have HCl plus NaOH resulting to NaCl plus water. At first glance, you might think that this is a double replacement reaction. But taking a closer look and analyzing the order and the composition of the reactants, you can see that one of the, reactant, the reactants is an acid, which starts with an H, and the other one has an OH, which means it's a base. Now, the product is a salt and water. So if this is the case, it's an acid-base neutralization. Now, this is not the order of the reactants all the time. Sometimes the base comes first, and in the product, sometimes the water comes first. Now, here's the example. Okay, in our example here, although, again, you might mistake this for a double displacement reaction, but still, it's an acid-base neutralization because... You have an acid, which starts with an H, and then you have an OH, which, is, which means you have a base. And then the product is water and a salt. Now, this is a form of a salt because it is made up of a metal and a nonmetal. So these two reactions, although they are double replacement reaction, these are specifically identified as an acid base neutralization. Okay, class, let's summarize our knowledge of the different types of chemical reactions. One, synthesis. If you combine simple things to form a complex one, you call that synthesis or combination. Decomposition is when you, when something complex breaks apart, into simple elements or compounds, you call that decomposition reaction. Combustion is when a compound com which contains carbon, hydrogen, or sometimes oxygen reacts with oxygen gas and will produce carbon dioxide and water, you call that combustion. Single replacement is when an element by itself combines with two elements that are initially paired up. It kicks one, one of the elements out and that element ends up by its own and the other element takes the place. That single replacement reaction. For a double replacement reaction, it's like two dancing couples with partners just traded places. A, B, and C, D. And then they end up with different partners.
And finally, for an acid-based neutralization, whenever the compound is composed of is an acid or a base and they react with it with one another to produce salt and water, you call that acid-base neutralization. There you have it, friends. These are the different types of chemical reaction. I hope that you can apply your knowledge here in identifying the types of reactions that you will be dealing in the later part of our session. Now it's practice time. Let's practice your skill in identifying the type of chemical reactions. Uh, I would like to give you a word that these, the, re the reactions or equations that we will be using are unbalanced because I would like you to focus on the elements, on the compounds, and the rearranging and the replacement of each of the elements and compounds, and do not be distracted with the coefficients and atoms in the reactions. Okay. Okay, let's start. Okay, magnesium and, al and aluminum chloride give us aluminum and magnesium chloride. Okay, what is happening here? What type of a chemical reaction is this? Okay, magnesium is on its own initially and then kicks out aluminum and then takes the place of aluminum and Fine. At the end, aluminum is now at its uh, by itself. So, what type of that? Okay, that is a single replacement. Now, the second one. For the second one, you have the chemical formula for octane, and it reacts with oxygen, giving you water and carbon dioxide. So, what do you think is the type of chemical reaction? So, you have carbon, you have hydrogen. And then reacts with with oxygen gas. Again, if there is oxygen gas, there is burning automatic. There is combustion. Okay. Next, so magnesium chloride breaks down into magnesium and chlorine, chlorine gas. So it's a complex compound breaking into two simpler all the way to the elements. And this is what you call decomposition. Okay? For this reaction, you have silver nitrate reacts with sodium chloride producing silver chloride or AgCl and sodium nitrate. So what happens here? So silver initially is paired with NO3 and then at the product silver is paired with chlorine. So sodium is paired initially with chlorine and at the product sodium is paired now with NO3. So this is a very good example of a double replacement reaction. Now the fifth one, magnesium combines with oxygen gas producing magnesium oxide it's a classic example of a synthesis or combination reaction okay let's continue with this number six okay this is a complex one na na2 co3 and it breaks down into two simpler compounds so it's a complex compound breaking down into two simpler compounds, not just breaking into just sodium, just oxygen, or just carbon. So although they are not broken into the basic elements, they are these are broken into simpler compounds. And this is a classic example of a decomposition reaction. Number seven. Okay, initially zinc is all by itself reacting with the couple and then zinc replaces the or kicks out hydrogen and then it ends up zinc is paired with chlorine and hydrogen is all by itself it's a classic example again of single replacement okay number eight 
Okay. NaCl plus H2O, H2SO4 resulting to sodium sulfate and HCl. Okay. Two pairs, switching partners. It's very obvious that the Na initially with the Cl, Na ends up with the SO4, and H initially with the SO4 ends up with HCl. So it's very obvious that this is a double replacement reaction. Number nine. For number nine, you can see that there are so many carbons, so many hydrogens, and there are some oxygens reacting with an oxygen gas. And then the product are carbon dioxide and water. It's very obvious that there is burning here in the presence of oxygen gas here. So this is a good example of a combustion reaction. Okay, so now we have here uh, an acid, which is the sulfuric acid, and then you have the base, which, is, which contains the OH, resulting to water and a salt. The salt is in the form of NaSO4, Na is a metal, SO4 is a non-metal, and automatic, this is an acid-base neutralization. Well, that's it, class. I hope you gain something and you learn something from this session, from this video lesson about the different types of chemical reaction. Please practice more and enhance your skills by practicing in more examples and equations. So, good luck and have a good day. Thank you.